right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. We have our awesome guest, Stacy McLeod, with us. Stacy, how are you doing today? Good. See, I think we have another guest. We have my cat, Hildy. She has Hildy. to be in my has to be in my business all the time. The dog's outside, so I'm sure you'll hear her at some point. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, the way we like to start <laughs> off our podcast with our guests is just pretty much just figure, I mean, we want to know just a basic, you know, indication of what your story is. So if you want to go ahead and let us know who Stacy McLeod is and kind of like your journey, that'd be awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm a Southern girl that's now um, a Vegas, I guess they call them transplants. Is that right? Whenever you get forced here. So I just moved to Las Vegas. Um, in very late April, early May. So I was in the South my whole life. I always said I would never leave the South. You weren't going to get me to leave the South. Um, every job I took was always in the South. And now here I am out West, and I'm not going to lie. I love it, and I don't know that I'd ever go back to the South. Oh, don't, tell, yeah. don't tell my mom. Mom, <laughs> I'll take Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm from Tennessee, born and raised. Um, I went to East Tennessee State where I studied um, psychology and communications and it was my goal to be a news anchor, and I wanted to be a news anchor in my hometown. And it took me about two years, and um, I ended up in Knoxville where I was the main uh, morning anchor, and then I moved on to the job of a main female anchor. So I did news for over a decade. Wow. And uh, then it just it, the doom and gloom kind of gets to you. <laughs> and I was, I was so young when I started my career. You know, most people, it takes a long time to get to that spot. And I was really, really young. And I felt like it made me grow up a little bit too fast. And so just kind of that and the depression surrounding always telling people bad news, um, I kind of wanted to get out. And I met my now husband, and he lived in Nashville. And I started looking for a job in Nashville outside of a new news but uh, a friend called me that I used to work with, and they were like, hey, there's a job, and I think it's perfect for you, and it's for an entertainment host. And it's in a newsroom, but you don't have to cover news. You'd be getting to cover, you know, entertainment and lifestyle and all the things, music, things I loved. And I went and applied for the job and got it, turned in my uh, notice, and moved to Nashville like three, four months later. Um, and then I had that job for quite a while before I ended up um, switching over to um, – great American country, taking a network job. And when our show was replaced with uh, reality television, <laughs> um, I lost my job. And it was a really hard thing for me because I literally started work on the Monday after I graduated college and I didn't know what to do. And so I started freelance and I ended up getting some really great freelance gigs um, and it all panned out and it all worked out great. But in the big process of all of that, I decided that I wanted to compete. I wanted to do um, bikini and uh, it kind of ended up being a blessing because uh, not only did it teach me a lot about myself, it, it gave me something to do and something to strive for and, and something to hold on to when I lost my job, you know, last year and didn't really make me feel as worthless as I probably would have had I didn't have something. So I think it kind of saved me, um, saved me from some depression, saved me from a lot of things. And I put a lot of focus on that. I built a huge following. I have a blog that originally started out just kind of as a rant that was more of a diary for me. And then when I started this fitness journey, I switched it all and made it all fitness related, lifestyle related, a little bit of entertainment still. I'll throw in there just for fun because I enjoy writing about it. Yeah, and I, I spent... Yeah, I spent a lot of time focusing on that so that I could still ride every day until I landed some more solid freelance gigs. So in a, in a nutshell, that's me, uh, and a wife and a fur mom and uh, just living here in Vegas trying to get my life in order. <laughs> now I'm a bikini pro. I just went pro. Yeah, uh, so yeah, thank you. So it was a long journey. It was my seventh national show. So it, it wasn't like it was handed to me or came easy and um, I worked really hard and took a lot of feedback into consideration and did what the judges wanted me to do and my first show this year and uh, brought it and, and finally did it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's quite a journey. Uh, wow, that's really, really, really cool. So thanks for sharing that. So I have to ask real quick, since you do live in Vegas, do you are you a gambler? No. You know, I'm really, <laughs> guys, I'm really bad at it. Um, gotcha. I, I hate losing. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter what it is. I, that's one thing. So this sport has really taught me how to lose and um, how to be a good loser. And it doesn't matter if it's like family game night or um, a casino or something huge. 
I, I do not lose well. Not that I care that the other person won, but I beat myself up. And so um, I remember the first time I really gambled was on like a cruise and I lost and like I was really pissed off for like the whole next day. And my husband was, he won, of course, he always wins. And I was like, you won. So you have no right to, to tell me that I can't be mad, you know? So no, I'm not a gambler, but I do enjoy playing every now and then. I'll take like 40 bucks and go sit at a slot machine and, right. and see how long it can last just for fun. But I think we've been to the casino once since we've lived here since April. Gotcha. So yeah, Vegas isn't what you think it is necessarily. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine, I can imagine. That's cool. I'm, I'm just like that. Like I, I like to gamble a little bit. I like playing roulette, but if I lose, I'm like, oh, I'm out of here. Yeah, it makes okay. me so mad. It makes me so mad. I'm like, I could have spent that money on so-and-so, you know? <laughs> All right, so if we travel back 10 years when you started your career as a news anchor, so what inspired you to actually be a news anchor? And then a follow-up question is, so you took a new job in this entertainment industry. So what was like that that main like driving force that you, know, you just could not resist that opportunity? Well, take me back. So I was in college, and I originally wanted to be a criminal psychologist. Mm. Yeah, and so um, it's not that I didn't want – news always fascinated me. I always watched it. I watched the evening news with my family. Um, I loved television. Like I loved, I acted, did a little commercial work, you know, that kind of stuff. But I never thought about being a news anchor. And I think when I went to college, for whatever reason, I wanted to do criminal psychology. So um, I got in, started doing it. And uh, sorry if she's watching, I don't even remember her name, but the lady that I was going to have to have for pretty much all of my criminal psychology class, my, my criminal justice classes, I just, um, I didn't like her very much. <laughs> and uh, she, I didn't think she was a good teacher, and I felt like it was going to ruin my experience. And so I thought, okay, I love psychology, so what can I do? And I was like, you know, I love communications. I love writing. I love all that. So let me just try it. And I took one communications class. That was it. I was hooked. I switched my major. I kept psychology, but I added in my junior year a second major of, of broadcast journalism. And I still finished in like four and a half years, four years in a semester, I think. So that's kind of, I just fell in love with it after that first writing class. I was an anchor for the, the news station there. And um, all my teachers were just like, this comes really natural. You're an amazing writer. Um, you've got great on-air presence and you should really, really just continue on. And um, one of my teachers was a news director and they have an internship and it was a rare paid internship and I applied for it and got it. And so uh, he ended up hiring me the Monday after graduation as a producer. And it, that kind of just progressed on to other jobs and, and kept growing. And I just kind of fell in love with it kind of organically. You know, um, I, I realized I was good at it and it was a talent that God gave me. Um, and I just kind of ran with it. So um, in news, you kind of have to start from really, really start from the bottom. My first job outside of internships was in um, Hazard, Kentucky. Okay. <laughs> Not the Dukes of Hazard. That's the county. This is the city. Chris, so, and I, Chris and I need to go to the South one of these days. We do. Man. Seriously. We got to get a taste yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah, please. It's a lot of, you know what they say? Everybody's so nice in the South and don't get me wrong. They are. But I've found like in Vegas, maybe because it's a hospitality city, um, that people are just as nice here. So anyway, that tells you anything. You, the West Coast is great too. So, um, you know, the, the, like I said, the entertainment thing just kind of happened randomly. I, I don't know that I, if I hadn't met my husband, and I keep looking because he's sitting out there working. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I'd ever, if I didn't meet him, if I would have done it. Um, I probably would have just remained kind of stuck and done what a lot of news people do, and then get, which is get out of the industry altogether. So I'm, I'm glad that it happened because I, I always love music and entertainment. And so that, it, it really just kind of fell upon my lap. But when I did it, I came to Nashville with, an empty Rolodex, because Rolodex is what we kind of used even then, <laughs> and, um, and didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody in Nashville other than my husband. I didn't really know how the music business worked. I knew how um, music, and I knew about songs, and I knew about artists, but I didn't know how the, the industry worked. So it took a little while to get my groove, but when I did, I kind of built my own little entertainment empire. I was the only full-time entertainment reporter um, in Nax Nashville, worked for Fox, um, so it was, it was just a great experience. And like I said, it, it kind of just happened organically. I think that's kind of been my life. Things have just kind of happened. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Okay, so take us through kind of like a day in the life of Stacey McLeod. Now? No. Like now, okay. In, in detail, too. Yeah, very Everything detailed. from waking up to winding down. <laughs> I don't know if that's, that's really boring. And the reason I say that <laughs> is because um, life has really changed for me um, since I moved to Vegas. And... Uh, so when I was, to take you back just really quick, when I was in Nashville and I had a full-time freelance gig, 
I was the host for a show called Power Block TV, which is the nation's number one automotive how-to show. And so I was on a regular basis shooting for them. But when I moved to Vegas, we um, hurried and got everything filmed like in bulk. So it's still on. You can still catch it on um, Grit or on well, maybe possibly on your local television station that's owned by Raycom. Um, and it will continue to air for goodness knows how long, um, still new episodes even. Um, but we had to hurry and get it all filmed. So when I moved to Vegas, it essentially jobless, you know, and I had to do it for my husband. It was the best move to make for our family. He owns an LED video production company called Amag, and they opened a West Coast warehouse. And um, it's just what was best for our family. Nice. So um, finding freelance work out here hasn't been easy. Uh, it, it's a little different. And so um, I'm really, just to be perfectly honest with you, aside from my blog, I'm a um, full-time housewife. And I thought I was going to be um, really bored with that. And I thought that I was going to be really depressed being a career woman. Um, but it's actually been a really good thing for our relationship. I'm, I'm maybe busier now than I was before. Um, my husband doesn't have to do anything. And that's kind of the goal of it. He works um, so much, you know, sometimes 18, 15 hours a day, works on all the time. And it always works. And so it just frees up any responsibilities that he had within the home. I take care of them. Um, but I also have my blog. And I've kind of turned that into an unpaid um, little career. So um, I spend a lot of time on that. So n going back to your question, things are really different for me now just because um, unless I have a gig, then my week is kind of structured around taking care of our home and taking care of my husband and, and taking care of my blog. So I get up and I kind of have some new rituals that I started as an what attempt. What time do you get up? You know, it really just depends. I'm a night owl. Okay. Um, sometimes I don't go to bed until 3, 4 o'clock. Oh, shit. Okay. In the morning. You're so, definitely suited for Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so usually he gets up like at eight. And so I'll usually wake up when he wakes up, but that doesn't mean I necessarily get up. Um, so my, when I do finally decide to get up, I, um, I make a new ritual of I make sure I make my bed every day. I feel like it sets the tone for the day. This is the psychologist in me. Um, it sets the tone for the day. I feel like it makes me more productive. I notice when I don't make my bed that um, I just feel lazier. So I get up and I make my bed and um, I stretch. Um, I lay on the floor and stretch for a little while and pour some coffee. That's like the most important thing ever. And um, I've kind of gotten on this kick where I don't eat breakfast right away unless I'm going to the gym right away. Um, it's not by habit or anything. Um, I, I, and I think maybe it's because I'm on prep and I try to like space my meals closer together because when I lost some of my macros, you know, I get hungrier, so I want to eat closer together. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of just wait until I'm hungry. I check emails, usually the first thing, check social media, respond to people. And then um, when I get hungry, uh, I eat and um, watch the news. It's kind of old habit I can't break, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I kind of I, I start I start looking for my blog for the next day. I started a project recently called Prep With Purpose. And um, if I don't have a person for the day, that next day I'll start looking. I'll start stockpiling them so that I have them to write on. But um, I keep a schedule. Like I, I really have something every day that is on. I'm a, I'm a note taker and I'm a list maker yeah. and, I, and I like structure. I'm the person if I go out to eat somewhere, I eat the same thing every time. So I like to have structure. So on Mondays, for example, Mondays are the day that I get up and I go to the grocery store and I meal prep all of our food through Thursday for me and my husband both. You know, Tuesdays is a certain thing. Wednesdays is laundry. Uh, Thursdays is meal prep again. You know, um, Fridays I clean the house. You know, Tuesdays I run errands. You know, so there's certain things that I lock in every day. And I do that in an attempt to have structure right. and in, a, in an attempt to stay busy so that I'm not ever sitting around at home. That's a huge misconception. And I'm not saying some people don't do it, um, but especially not having kids, only having fur kids. I think people think that I just sit at home all day long, and um, I don't. I make sure that I have a schedule. I make sure I fill my day with things um, all the way up until my husband comes home. That way that um, I feel like I have purpose within our household or, you know, or if I'm planning, you know, I've got, a, I've got a big freelance gig coming up in a couple of weeks for the Olympia. I do all the backstage interviews for Mr. Olympia. So um, I'll be starting um, research for that. So a lot of my gigs require a lot of research. So um, like every week's different, but I have my certain things that I do every day, like make my bed, have my coffee, make my breakfast, which is always the same. And then I tackle my whatever's on my list for that day, um, for whether it be for our home or for me personally. Um, and then in, we I don't go to the gym until my husband gets home from work. We usually go together. So I'm a late gym goer, usually like 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Mm, got it. Cool. Yep. I like it.
Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that. And like yeah. you said, we like the details. We're just fascinated by uh, people's lives and you know their, the habits they pick up and everything like that. Because we're big advocates uh, of that ourselves. So. I'm very detail oriented. Yeah. That, that's a that's a negative and a positive, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna say something really quick. I don't think did, did did your husband kind of like do the whole like design of the home or was that you? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, come on. No. That's a dumb he he does he <laughs> does. I just had to ask. I was kidding. <laughs> He does help like that. I don't know if you can see it. There's a really cool picture I don't know if yeah, you see see back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, like, for example, when I found that, you know, um, I, I sent it to him like um, he works all the time. And so we, we really just text or I message. That's the really the way we communicate until he gets home. Um, and I sent it to him like, do you like this? And, you know, he did help like with placement, you know, but we're our house. You can probably hear me echoing is still pretty empty. Like we're still trying to get everything moved and um, get everything settled. We still have a house in Nashville that's on the market that we're trying to sell. So if anybody in Nashville is watching, um, uh, let me know. 12 South House for sale. <laughs> You know, right. so uh, yeah, so we're still selling our house in Nashville, which is rough. So until that sells, it's a little, a little empty. But yeah, so um, once that sells and I can have some budget to decorate our house, then that'll be a whole nother day on my schedule. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, let's let's shift gears here. So yeah. let's uh, talk about becoming a, a pro and getting your pro card, right? So you got your pro card in July. I want to know basically what that felt like, you know, spiritually, spiritually, mentally. And emotionally. emotionally, yes, I got I got like little goosebumps just from you all <laughs> like saying it. I, I don't know. I'm one of those people that um, when I, I have a hard time making decisions, like a really hard time making decisions, um, I'm not good at it. Whether it's like what I'm gonna eat or what I'm gonna like, even like what book I'm gonna read, or you know, I'm really bad about it. I overanalyze everything. And so, but when I do make a decision to do something, that's it. I'm in, I'm all in, I have tunnel vision and I want it and I want the best and I want to be the best. So when I decided that I wanted to do this at first, it was just like, I don't know, I'm, you know, I'm 30 something and, and I want to see how fit I can get, you know, I want to see what this is all about. I can do it. And then when I won my first, I did my first show and I won and I won overall and I got the bug and that was it. That's what I wanted to do it. And I wanted to get better and better. How long and ago was this, though, the first show you won? Two, two years ago. Two years ago, okay. Yeah. And so um, I, I did all local shows that year until the very end of the year, did my mm -hmm. first national show. And then um, I very unexpectedly switched coaches. My, my coach became unavailable, and um, it kind of ended up being a blessing. As much as I loved her and, and absolutely loved working with her, um, I was introduced to Lane right. Norton and um, the whole flexible dieting lifestyle, which fits me and my personality and and my stomach and my mind a whole lot better. And I just could not believe like how I dialed in and how, how I did it. And, and it was great. And so the first season was a little bit of an experiment last year, learning to count macros, learning to, you know, plug everything in. And, and I had a great season. I had all top 10 placements. I wasn't what I wanted nationally, but, um, and then I won another local show so that I'd be qualified for this year. And um, we ended up only having to do a three-week prep plus a peak week um, because my body just did so well in the off-season um, with my reverse. So a lot of people, like, I've had some criticism for that. Like, oh, you didn't work as hard. And, oh, you know, I worked harder than you. No, no, I just worked different, you know. And, and in your off-season when maybe you were, like, binge eating or, you know, whatever, which is that's fine. If that's what somebody wants to do, I don't criticize them. That's their own method. But, um, you know, I still, when I went to a restaurant, I still tracked everything, you know, and, and that, yeah, and that can be just as hard in its own, in its own sense. So we did a three week prep. I did not trust it. I did not believe it was going to happen. Um, and it did. And I, you know, I don't know. I went in like always with zero expectations, but with a lot of hope and, uh, I can't describe the feeling. Like, I feel like pre, it was a two day show. So prejudging was on Friday. I did I had to wait until the oh, next wow. night. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so I just had a good feeling, though, when I was in prejudging. You never know what can happen. But um, I was center in both Masters and Open. I ended up winning my pro card twice, actually, in Open and Masters. And then I won overall in Masters. So I would say that it was well worth the wait to um, like go in and win my pro card twice and win my, um, uh, the overall bikini champion for Masters. Um, I still don't know what it feels like, guys. I'm, I'm prepping. Or I'm getting ready to do my third pro show. I jumped right in, man. I wanted to get back. I love the stage. I was so early in my um, season when I won my pro card. It was my first show that I wasn't burnt out yet. So um, I wanted to do, you know, shows. So I don't know. I just love being on stage. And I still don't think it hit me. It hit me when I did Tampa. I did Tampa Pro, which is one of the hardest pro shows. Mm -hmm. And everybody told me I was crazy for doing it. But I did it anyway. 
And I think it hit me then um, when I was on stage with girls that were Olympians and girls that I have watched and cheered on and I was standing next to them on stage. I think it kind of hit me as, as, hey, this is, this is a dream and it's coming true and it's really cool. That's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and you yeah. Know, we, we know how brutal like the industry can be within like competing and stuff. Just like watching some of our clients, you know, go through the process. You, you put your, you know, blood, sweat and tears into it for like four to six months. Yeah, you know, you bring in an amazing package, but it's a very subjective sport, you know, with the judges and stuff. And sometimes it's just, you, you, that's not what they're looking for. So it's really tough to just, you know, see the client just kind of go through that. So my question is, what kind of advice can you give to like a, you know, a bikini competitor, a figure competitor that's kind of just barely starting their journey on this? What kind of like, you know, exercises, anything, you know, words of wisdom can you, you know, provide that, you know, when they don't get the outcome they want? Well, yeah, just listen, you know, I mean, listen, but, but, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to be happy with the look that you bring to the stage. So, um, I think that it's important to attempt to get judges feedback and not just from one judge, but the problem there is it makes it more confusing because one judge is going to tell you one thing and other judge is going to tell you the other thing. So just kind of take, um, collective notes from all of them. And if there's one thing that all the judges say you need to work on, then you probably do, um, and take it and go from there, but don't, be overly critical or overly anal analyze everything they say because like you said it's totally subjective and and it really even more than that it's it's all about who you're standing next to right. you know I've, I've looked at a lineup before and been like man if i'd been in that call that cattle call of girls that came out i may not have stood out as too muscular which is what i i usually get a lot that i'm too hard for bikini um or you know and so it really depends on those six girls you're standing next to so sometimes it has nothing to do with subjective it has to do with a little bit of luck um, as well. Yes. So I tell people to make sure and take that into consideration and there's nothing you can do about that. It's random. So put in the work, um, don't cut any corners, um, be healthy, think about the long term. And, um, you know, if your coach is telling you things that sound too restrictive and sound not right, then it probably isn't right. I mean, this is a sport and it's like any, like a football player that does two days and three days to get ready for the Super Bowl. There are things we have to do, but, um, if it sounds too restrictive, if you're eating freaking, tilapia and asparagus for breakfast lunch and dinner then you're gonna gain weight after you step off stage and you're gonna be unhappy with yourself and you're gonna have body image issues it doesn't matter how confident you are right. so um that's the biggest advice i give people is really think about what they're doing before they compete and then you know when they get their feedback take it all of it take it into consideration and pick something but don't try to do everything because you're never going to make everybody happy right. and um yeah and just and just go in also with a look you're happy with the judges for the most part, usually think I'm a little too hard, but if I get too soft, then I'm not confident on stage and it reflects in my posing, which is something that the coaches always really like is my posing. So I just kind of take a middle ground and, and hope for the best. <laughs> hey, I like it. Yeah, I love it. And then just a follow up question with that is I think that <clears throat> what you're doing right now is great because you have balance, right? So you're a career woman. You obviously have a husband. You have, you have, you have a kid, right? No, to a dog and a cat. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> For I mean, kids. Th but it's good to know, though, because, I mean, I know a lot of competitors will go into this by themselves, and it can be a dark, dark journey by themselves, yeah. right? And they can become very isolated, antisocial. So, I mean, maybe just give me, like, one or two tips, like, what you would give somebody, you know, to kind of balance all this out with, like, having habits, structure, you know, if they have a significant other, stuff like that. Well, I'm really lucky in the fact that my husband, he goes to the gym with me and he enjoys it. You know, and he, um, a lot of his friends are competitors. He actually competed years ago before we met a few times. So he gets it. So yeah. I'm really lucky there. So I don't know that I can give much advice with that. Um, but I think that the thing is, is you have to understand that people aren't going to understand and you have to be okay with that. Um, and you know what? Sometimes you learn in the process, the people that you need to purge from your life. Um, because if they don't understand, then, um, Maybe they don't need to be there to begin with. Um, you know, I understand when my friends have kids and they can't spend as much time with me, or I understand when their career takes over and they can't spend as much time with me. I and mean, this may be silly. It may just be a hobby, but it's also something, like I said, that's kind of saved my life and improved my life. And so if somebody can't appreciate that, then maybe it's time to reconsider that person in your life, yeah. A. Um, but, you, you know, finding balance, I think that you just have to, first of all, make sure people understand. I had a really hard time making people understand you can still invite me to things just because I can't eat at that restaurant or just because I, I can't um, go at a certain time. You know, if you, if you give me advance notice and you don't call me the day of and be like, hey, 
in an hour, do you want to go to, you know, so-and-so restaurant, you know, or go out, you know, um, if you give me advance notice and you understand that I may have my food or I may just be drinking uh, sugar-free Red Bull instead of a cocktail and you're okay with that, then still invite me, you know, there's, there's other things we can do. I've started getting my friends, like when I first started competing last year, I remember texting my friend and was like, we've not seen each other in forever and I need to go push a car for cardio. So, <laughs> Um, do you want to drive the car and that's how we can hang out? So you just got to come up with creative ways to hang out with your yeah. friends. And if they're your real friends and, and they love you and they support you, then they'll figure, they'll figure it out. Absolutely. Yeah. Love that. Very well said. So let's kind of shift gears here. So Chris and I are very, very big proponents of what we call the four pillars of life. So health, wealth, love, and happiness. Um, I know everybody has, has their struggles with each component. So what would you say that, you know, you are struggling with? As far as health, wealth, love, and happiness? Yeah. I'm definitely, like I said, wealth right now <laughs> because we have two houses and two mortgages and, okay. and uh, trying to get everything balanced. Um, luckily, like I said, me staying at home is the smarter thing, actually, because it allows my husband, um, who owns a company, to um, work more, which in turn brings in more money because there's a big misconception, and that is that people in television make lots of money, and we do not. We're very poorly paid. So um, it actually just makes more sense for me to pick up freelance as needed, honestly, more of to make me feel good and to be able to continue to do what I love, which is one reason I blog, because um, it is free. I don't make any money off of it, um, but I enjoy it, and it keeps me doing what I love doing, which is writing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I would say wealth right now, just because it's, you know, have new journey, having to learn to, to balance on one income and still try to compete, which even on a pro level is expensive, even with a sponsor, even with a sponsor, it's expensive. So I would say that right now. And, um, you know, I'm learning to be happy. Um, that's another one that kind of like moving is a big deal and it's life changing. And like I mentioned so early in my career, I was so successful. And so I never envisioned I'd be where I am in my life. And so I've had to learn to build my own happiness and build my own purpose. And um, those are probably the ones I would struggle with the most. Um, but I'm learning. Gotcha. And adjusting. Love it. All right. So we're going to go into what we call rapid dynamic questions right now. So these, oh, these no. are kind of just rapid fire <laughs> questions. In you heard me say that I'm not good at decision making. So <laughs> All right. So what are you doing currently training nutrition wise now that you're not competing? Well, I'm actually, okay. Prep. Yeah. Prep right now? Well, here, oh. that's, that's kind of a trick question because I am, we, I just decided this week that I'm going to do a show next oh, weekend. Okay, okay. I'm coasting into a show. I, the first, you, look pretty, uh, you look pretty Well, I guess I'm telling you all first next Saturday. Oh, wow. yeah. I was wondering too, because you look really conditioned. Right Seriously. Now. Yeah. I, I, st I try to stay pretty lean. It's a goal of mine to like stay within a certain weight. And, um, you know, I'm blessed that I work with Lane and he, he lets me do slower reverses. But um, I'd planned on taking a little bit of a break and doing some shows like in early October, November reversing a little bit um but like i said i didn't i didn't i just started prep in june and so I've, i'd only did done one show and i did two really quick pro shows but i found out that there was a show in arizona and it's like an hour away and i logged on and flights were like 90 bucks and i was like i called lane and i was like if there's a show in two weeks can we do it and he's like i mean yeah i've, I've been reversing and it's been going so well i've actually lost weight i'm below stage weight right now today so like, and the goal was actually to gain a little bit of weight because I was too conditioned. So we're going to try coasting um, into the show next week and see what happens um, just because it's a cheaper show for me to fly to Arizona as it is to fly East Coast. So actually I am on prep, so, um, but not a lot is changing right now. We, we, we just kind of stopped my reverse where it was at and uh, are maintaining into next week. Um, so that's where I am right now. But when I'm done and I see how the show goes, I'll go from there. There are several shows that are also in October, November. So I may continue um, and not start my reverse until the holidays. We'll see. I, I, I'm just kind of playing it with pro shows. You kind of have to play it by ear like that. Okay. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. So what does Stacy like to do for fun? Uh, work out. Work out? <laughs> no, it really is fun for me. Like, I don't know what I would do if I didn't get to go to the gym. Um, I work, work out really is it. I like to read if I can make a decision on what book to read. And um, uh, just spend time with my husband when I can. He works a lot. So whatever that means that we do. Um, one, one requirement in Vegas was we wanted to have a pool and it's pretty much whatever house you look at, they have pools. Yeah. We have a really cool pool. So on the weekends we try to at least go out there for a couple of hours. Um, but that's fun for me. The gym is fun. It's like my playground. And so I love going in and seeing what my body can do and coming up with unique ways to do the same exercise, um, and filming it and putting it online for people to teach them a little bit. Right. So that's fun for me and creating like fun meals. I don't know if you are seeing my Snapchat. No, see girl. Is that 
how is that? How did you make that? And so I got always try to come up with a fun little creation. Yeah, I've seen some of those on your Instagram too. I'm yeah. like, whoa, like, <laughs> man, I need to step up my game. <laughs> I don't know. You guys are good at that. We're all right. All right. So the next question. So Eric and I are almost done with our book and it's titled The New Era of Fitness. So my question is, do you think we live in a new era of fitness right now? You know, I don't even know what the old era of fitness is, I guess. Like, you know, for me, I, I was a gymnast and I um, always tried to stay in shape, but I never really paid attention. The only, the only thing I can remember is sweating to the oldies with my mom in our living room. So based on that, then yes, uh, the era of fitness has changed for sure. The look that um, I think is acceptable now for women mm-hmm. Um, I mean, then it was like, ew, muscles, you're going to look like a man. And I think that you still hear that. You still have people say that. But I think we're shifting away from that into where it's okay to be a strong, fit woman, you know, with, with, with biceps and with muscles. It doesn't, look, it doesn't look manly anymore. People, I think, are starting to understand that a little bit more. And so as a woman, I think that um, that's what I see a little bit more is people are, are starting to accept all shapes and sizes as being um, feminine whenever used to it was just just curvy or you know just one certain way and there for a little while it was just stick figure for runway and I think that I think we're on a positive spin I mean at least I'd like to think so maybe I'm being a little too positive yeah, no, I agree 100%. <laughs> That's a good answer yeah I agree 100 percent so last question we ask um, you know our guests is what is your definition of living a dynamic lifestyle um, you know I think that I don't just being like balanced like we talked about I think that you've got to be try to be happy on all points of your life I think that for me God first um and my family second and um me third and that, that can be a hard time a hard thing sometimes because um especially in this industry that's a me 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 industry and a look at me and look at my aesthetics and hey look what I can do and I'm going to get on stage and you're going to judge me it quickly becomes all about you and so for me moving that and making it less about me has become such a priority. And um, so for me, living a dynamic lifestyle is, is just um, balance and really trying to use what I do in my platform to help others. And um, I think I mentioned to you guys, I, I started a, a portion of my blog called Prep With Purpose, right. and it kind of came about kind of organically. And long story short, when I started this season, I, I was like, I've got to have more of a reason than I just want to earn my pro status. I've got to have more than just a goal of being fit um, in order to keep doing this because um, it can become so selfish whether you mean for it to or not. And so um, go to my blog, simplystacy.com. You can find out exactly what it is, but it's called Prep With Purpose. And basically every day um, I lift up and for someone else um, when I go to the gym. They're my motivation. um, And it's just a reminder that I'm able I've been given the ability to lift. I've been given the ability to live and breathe and, and, and have healthy lungs when somebody else may be laying in bed with lung cancer. Yeah. And I don't want to take that for granted. Yeah. So say, for example, my person is someone that has stage four lung cancer. Then that day I'm extra grateful for the every breath I breathe in and out. And um, when I go to the gym, I start off my session. Um, personally, I'm a Christian, so I, I use prayer. But I tell people, if you're not a Christian, that's fine. You don't have to use prayer. You can use meditation. Um, you can just send up good vibes into the universe, whatever it is that you believe in. Um, you can still lift up and for the person of the day. So you just log on to the blog, see who we're lifting up and for that day, and use that person as your motivation. When you're like, I don't want to go to the gym. I want to lay in bed. I want to sit on the couch. Well, I guarantee you that person that just lost their leg in a car accident or that little kid who is in the hospital getting chemotherapy would love to be out in the sunshine running. Yeah. And so you shut up, you quit bitching, and you do it. And then while you're there, you lift them up for whatever physical reason it is. And I just kind of came up with it. Yeah, no, that's really, really cool. I, I, really, like, that. I like that yeah. too. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm so, 100% in agreement. I mean, I think people take physical activity um, just for granted. And like you said, people are just born with disabilities, just missing limbs, I mean, you know, diseases, yeah. and it's just unfortunate. So we have to take that and utilize it. And I even say a prayer right before the gym because I am injury prone. So it's like I just want to get through a yeah. workout and progress a little bit as I can. So I love that answer. Thank you, yeah. Sharon. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So thank you so much for coming yeah. on and talking to us and our audience. So where can we uh, follow you and your work and be a part of your journey? Well, as I mentioned, simply Stacy.com. No E in my name, S-T-A-C-Y. That's my blog. And every more like at night, I usually write them. So they upload in the morning every day um, under blog and motivation. I try to have a new person for prep with purpose. So the biggest way that you can help me is help me help other people. That's really what I want to do right now. And there are a couple of days a week. I may not have a new person. 
Um, but you can subscribe to where you can um, get them sent to your inbox too. But just joining me on this journey, it's a little prayer chain or, or um, whatever you want to call it, like I said. And I feel like um, not only can we help ourselves, we can help others. So I ask that you log on every day, see who the person is. And take five minutes out of your day to lift them up and think about somebody else other than yourself and then use them as your motivation, whether it's we're all prepping for something. Yeah, I'm prepping for a show next weekend, but we're all prepping for something, whether it be a project or work or school or being a parent or whatever it is, we're all prepping for something. So use them as your motivation when you feel like you can't do it and, and use them as a reminder to be grateful and take a moment out of your day and help somebody else. So that's where you can find me first and foremost. And what I really want people um, to help me with is, is helping others. But then also I love my Instagram, um, Twitter, Snapchat. I've kind of really become like a, a snap snob. That's kind of my thing. And I post all my food there. And then if I, I usually post the recipes to the stuff you see on Snapchat on my blog as well. Yeah. So, um, and I'm always willing to help people. Um, so I spend a lot of my day helping people with supplements and stuff like that and emails. So um, Instagram is just at Stacey McLeod, no E, S-T-A-C-Y-M-C-C-L-O-U-D. That's my Snapchat. That's pretty much everything. Facebook is all just my name. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's where you can find me. I love to connect with people. I love to help people and um, do what I can to be part of making this uh, industry of bodybuilding and fitness less about me and more about others. Right. Well, you're doing yeah. a hell of a job, so keep it up. Yeah, and we'll plug all that stuff in the show notes. And yeah, you know, best of luck with your upcoming show and thanks. keep kicking ass. Yeah, you know? thanks so again for coming. Thanks on. again for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thank you all for having such a great podcast. It's an honor to be part of it. I love it. Thank you so much. So have a great day and we'll talk soon. Okay. Bye, all right. Stacey. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thanks guys for tuning in to our video. We really, really appreciate it. And before you guys go, make sure to subscribe below to our newsletter so you guys can get our free and new book, The Four Pillars of Becoming Dynamic Within Fitness.